and boom. <laughs> All right, welcome, uh, 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 chat room. Those people. Yes, hello. Hello. Those people. We'll just stick with those people. That sounds official. <laughs> those people. All right, are you are you guys ready to go? Because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this this shit on the road. Yeah. Hey, uh, I have no idea what yeah. this is going to do, but we're just going <laughs> to. Yeah. Like totally. Let's just see how it goes. Fuck it. That's what uh, happened. Okay. Um, we don't even have the chat screen on there today. Ugh, no. Whatever. Do we have a Do we have a a window for our guest? Uh, what do you mean a window for our guest? A uh, you know how we got the little. No, I'm we're we're streaming the uh the hangout. Oh, okay, got yeah, it, got it, got yeah, it. Got we're, it. we're going old okay. school today. <laughs> old okay. school, like we're we are we are hours late, off schedule, off kilter, and off color, and we're just fucking rolling with it. <laughs> but hey, that's why we're still in beta, right? Precisely. Right. Oh, look at that! Now I've got a little warmth to my face. It's a, it's a sad day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do this thing. All right, man. This show is gonna be NSFW, by the way. And if you don't catch it live, what? you may never catch it because I'm not sure what I'm gonna say once we start talking. <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. Can y'all hear the sound? I should probably ask you yep. that first. Okay, yes. y'all heard it. All right. Fuck do it. it. Stop, shut up, man. Stop yelling at me, hooker. <laughs> All right, hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode, uh, I don't know, 55. Beta 55. Beta, yeah, beta 55 for Friday or Saturday now, the 7th of November, 2015. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I am sitting here in my underwear because I just got off work and stripped that damn uniform off. I have been fired twice this week from the same job from two different bosses for different events. I am fed up and sick and tired of pretty much everything in the whole fucking world, and I'm in a good goddamn mood because we just indexed at 2 o'clock in the morning, which is like 13 hours ago, and I'm finally off work, and fuck it, we're going to have a podcast. That's Kent. Hey. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I, I know um, kind of how your week went. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty bitchy. Um, Super yeah. sweet. Oh, man. I don't have anything so exciting to report. I, uh, I've got some boring stuff to talk about. Okay. All right. Well, then let's so, get to but our hey, guest. But hey, at least we're not alone. At least it's not the two of us. Right, right. Our guest this week, if you've seen her in the chat room, her, she goes by Mama Collins. She is uh, one of the oldest friends that Kent and I share. Oldest as in like long a time, not old as in decrepit. Well, uh, thank too. you. Well, I don't hey. know. If we, do we even have any de de <laughs> decrepit friends? We have some old friends. I mean, you know, full generation ahead of us, but she's even she's You guys will decrepit. always be older. Just remember that. Well, that is, yeah, there's that. Uh, look, I'll How are doing, you tonight? I'm, I'm doing pretty good for my for my age. So anyway, we have, yeah, yeah. As Kent keeps trying to draw her into the conversation here, we have Marjorie Collins on the, on the hangout with us tonight. How are you doing? I'm, I'm great. How are you guys? Kent, how are well, you? Because I am. I'm ready. I think to we're end. about to find out how Amos is. <laughs> oh boy! Holy this shit! This is gonna be fun. So, so let's get to everybody's week, man. Kent, how is your week? What's going on? Yeah. Well, okay. The most exciting thing that happened to me this week is uh, I've got a Ford Fiesta, one of my like parking lot worth of cars out here. That's unfortunate. And uh, there, there's a there's a recall where the door latches don't work. And the door just like just decides randomly just to not be able to close. And uh, this happened several months ago, and I got it fixed. But they only fix the one that's broken. They won't replace all four. So it happened again to a different door. And I had to deal with that shit. And I after some some wrangling, 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 wrangling. How do you say that? wrangling yeah all right <clears throat> more of this yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely what, what, what okay you, now all right, all right, what, do you, what do you drink tonight let's wrangling. just go ahead and get to that i was what are you drinking i was tonight? able to get all four of them 
swapped out. So anyway, way boring story. Let's move on because that's that's what, not what, interesting. What are, what are you drinking tonight? Marjorie, how was your week? My week was good. I, um, yeah, I'm a mom, so I watch Disney all day long. I don't have anything fun to report. It was just new new Mickey Mouse was on this week, so that's all I can talk about. <laughs> that's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh damn! All right, Amos, let it let us have it. What do let you got? Go. <laughs> uh, are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Let it, yeah. let it rip. Um, okay, so we had an exercise this week. Uh, started on Sunday. And I was cell bossing, which is basically I'm a miniature pro super for just a certain, a smaller number of, uh, of aircraft than typical. In this particular instance, it was four. And uh, by Wednesday, I had been fired. Um, and then the person that they chose to replace me um, got sick. So they rehired me. And then uh, the next day, I was fired again. So <laughs> uh, from a different boss. And uh, essentially what it comes down to is they, everybody was complaining about how piss poor of a job I was doing, but no one could actually tell me what I was doing wrong. Um, and I, from everybody, <laughs> so, so if you talk to the layman, uh, you know, the, the, the average person, the average worker, whatever else, I was doing a great job. I was, I was doing exactly what I needed to do. You talk to anyone in supervision and well, not so much the case. So, right. uh, you know, and no one has so you, actually said... So you weren't, you weren't pushing up enough airplanes or... or what? what? Fuck. No. You weren't pushing up enough airplanes? No, I would never push up airplanes. That's dumb. Oh, fuck, f- fuck off, Juvet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You fucking... Pushing up airplanes is a general a general term, but in, in Korea, <laughs> in Korea, they make it a, a squadron-specific term. Anyway, all right, for, we're, we're boring the non-military folks. Continue, continue. You, you sure are. You, so, so, um, so, uh, so the week continued. We had a, a few lost tools, um, oh, and they all got blamed those... on me uh, oh. because because not only were they in my cell, but I'm also the chief of, of, of CTK. So no matter whose fault it was, it turned out to be mine. I did a whole bunch of 145s, <laughs> lost tool reports. I ended up doing a lost tool oh, report. God on a canteen that someone lost at seven o'clock in the morning. Didn't tell anybody. Didn't even realize it was missing until noon. Didn't tell me until five 30 while I was launching out jets. And I got yelled at for not reporting it sooner when the person just mentioned it to me in passing. Like you know, he's going from one aircraft to another running, literally running from one aircraft to another to catch one. Cause he had just launched one out. And uh, it tells me in passing, yeah, I can't find my canteen. Like, okay, we'll launch the goddamn jet. Well, apparently that was the wrong answer. I should have stopped the entire flight line right there to look for this guy's fucking canteen from, you know, I don't know how long ago. And uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so that gets, that gets blown up. That turned out to be a 19 hour shift. That was two days after, or that turned into an 18 hour shift, two days after a 19 hour shift. Uh, for a LOX tube from two days before that, that had actually gotten fucking found, but I still had to do the paperwork for it. Um, <laughs> it's Jesus. like, and then the canteen was found the next day. I asked the weapons guys and one of them was like, yeah, it's right here in my bag. Like, why the fuck would you pick up a canteen and just take it home without telling anybody about it? You know what I mean? Oh, well, then I realized he didn't have a canteen on his vest. So where the fuck was his canteen? So you, you I can put okay. two and two together and figure out what was going on there. Hey, look, a canteen. <laughs> I guess I can fucking claim this one. So, but Damn, I still man. had to do the fucking paperwork for it. And it was a 16-hour shift for all the guys with me that were working to uh, to find it, to looking for it. It was an 18-hour shift for me over some dipshit that fucking wanted to throw a canteen in his bag and not tell anybody about it. Like, it's not even a goddamn tool. It's a fucking, like, the QA didn't even classify it as a lost tool. They classified it as a lost item. And it was, like, the second one they've done all year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the stupidest shit. Like, yeah. hey, I can't find my foamies. <laughs> They're not in my pocket. Let me call a fucking ramp freeze so I can find my foamies. Oh, they were in a different pocket. Sorry for freezing the ramp. You know what I mean? Yeah. Complete. Oh, I just, you know, I, I, yeah, this, this week. And then, okay, so last night, this is the kicker. This is the part that really fucking gets me, right? It's Friday night. I go home at six o'clock, which is an hour after my shift. That's that's usually pretty fair for an exercise. Leaving about an hour after your shift, that's that's kind of on time for an exercise. You know, twelve hour yeah, shift, right, and you right. don't get you you don't get out of there until an hour later. That's okay, cool, no problem. So I get home at five o'clock or at six o'clock, 
I shoved some some leftover ice cream down my fucking throat, right? Because that's what I had available to me. Shove some leftover ice cream down my throat while I do a load of laundry. I throw it in the washer. I get my shower. I brush my teeth. I get out of the shower, you know, after I get out of the shower. Then I throw my clothes from the washer into the dryer because that's about how long they take in the fucking miniature washer I got. And then I, I, I pop my flex reel and go to fucking bed. It's the end of the exercise. It's Friday. It should be indexing any fucking moment, right? Mm. Cool. Well, then certain things like a, a chain of events happens that I I should have probably fucking foreseen, okay? So my alarm goes off at 3.30. I turn it off, which is basically my way of snoozing it because, well, I've got one set for 3.45. That one goes off. Re- you know, hit that snooze, all right? My four o'clock one goes off, and it's the one that says, okay, you got to get fucking up now. You've only got an hour to be at work. You got to get up. So I get up. I look at the TV. It says index on the TV because when you're overseas and you're during exercise, the TVs are are one of your primary forms of communication. Index on the TV, you know, and all these multiple colors and shit and whatever. So I sit down here on the couch, and I text my little Facebook group with, with my NCOs, hey, what's the word on the index? Find out if I still got to come in, right? My One of my NCOs replies back four minutes later. It's, yeah, you, we're still maintaining normal shifts. And that would be great. That'd be amazing if I hadn't taken that flex reel when I went to bed. <laughs> because in the three minutes I was trying to wake up and, you know, rub my eyes and all that stuff on the, on the couch, I fell back asleep. Mm. Mm. So I never, mm. never heard the notification of, of the message. So I wake up to at eight o'clock in the morning oh, to my chief and my senior banging on the door, ask me, why the fuck aren't you at work? Oh, uh, damn. So there's that. So I'm sure paperwork is coming down the fucking pipe after being fired twice <clears throat> in the same week, having fucking however many lost tools. And then that shit this morning, like it, I'm, I'm sure there's paperwork coming down the, down the tube, but that's all right because uh, I've got paperwork going back up the tube because I, I, I'm fucking tired of the, uh, I'm tired of people's bullshit. Let's, let's just say that. Yeah. Let's keep it as fucking yeah. job conscious <laughs> as possible. I'm really tired of people's bullshit, and I'm, uh, especially when it's affecting multiple people, I'm just, I'm fucking done. So I'm doing my, my normal legal option. Oh, and by the way, I had decided on like Wednesday, the next time that anybody asked me about some stupid shit that, that is just fucking retarded, I'm not even going to answer. I've, I've got my answer like pre-programmed. I reserve all of my, uh, I reserve all of my rights according to UCMJ and I will not answer any questions until I've spoken to a lawyer, a chaplain or a mental health professional. And after the third time, I would give what I'm required to give according to Article 5 the, of the uh, the Code of Conduct. Name, rank, and service number. <laughs> fucking done, dude. Like, I have reached that point in my career where I am wow. absolutely fucking done. Yeah. That's that's why I'm a civilian now. Yeah. I, ha- I, was, I have reached the... I've been done for like five or six years, and I... Yeah. Yeah. I, I have reached the epitome of stupid, and looking down, it's like I, I'm just... I'm here. The only reason I'm here is to get my family and and take us to my next assignment. And right, right. Like there, there's no other reason for me to be here, other than trying to provide a, a better assignment, a better living condition for my right, family. Right, right. Yeah, and, it's a, it's a means to an end. Yes. So fuck yeah. it. Why, why put up with this random shit? So anyway, that yeah. that's been my week. That's a, a quick summary without as much cussing and uh, name dropping. <laughs> as, as I, I would. Did did you have time for anything geeky? Um, if it hadn't been for my Apple Watch, I wouldn't have had time for anything at all. So luckily, I got some messages, and w- it, well, I got all of them, but I was able to respond to some of them, and uh, had a little bit of time to do a few chats with the wife with the little double touch heartbeat thing and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was the geekiest thing I did was keep my phone in my pocket and go solely by way of the watch since we're not allowed to have our phone out there. Did, did you hear about Darth Jar Jar? I did. I did hear about Darth Jar Jar in the shower last night as I was catching up on some of my podcasts. <laughs> oh, my God. This thing blew up over the last week on Reddit. Yep. Some Somebody in the Star Wars Reddit or you know the Star Wars subreddit 
posted a theory, a long ass, well thought out, ten minute read Reddit post about how Jar Jar Binks is really the the Sith Lord, the like master Sith Lord, right? In the prequels, and he was the one pulling all the strings. And he's going to appear in the new trilogy as the supreme leader. As goofy and fucked up as it sounds, it makes if sense. you read if you read all this guy's all, all this guy's posts about it, it's kind of hard to argue. <laughs> uh, Palpatine, Mar- Marjorie, did you did you? hear about this at all did you, you no i haven't are you are, oh, you, are, you, are you a star wars fan i am okay yeah oh yeah angle your camera so that he can see what's over your over your right shoulder nice <laughs> that's that's pretty badass i like it yeah so fra- framed in her living room is a star wars the force awakens poster it's actually a light box oh yeah oh right not yeah. just framed, but it's framed in a light box. <laughs> so, yeah, I would wow. say she's probably a Star Wars fan. May have. <laughs> May have. My, my son actually has a Darth Vader uh, reclining chair. That's oh, that's is. badass. I want yeah. one of those. <laughs> Why don't I have one? <laughs> it's little. <laughs> so, yeah, so I heard about that last night, and I plan on reading it uh, You know, sometime after the drunken stupor I plan to engage in this evening. So uh, Night Flyer in the chat says that he saw a video about this, and I have not seen it. I didn't even know there was a video. Wow. So if, if Night Flyer can provide us a, a link to that, we'll, we'll be sure to put that in the show notes. Um, speaking of videos, though, and Star Wars, today a new trailer was released. We were told that there was only going to be one just, trailer. Just the one. But th- yeah. th- this, isn't just, this isn't just any trailer. This, this is the international version, right? Right, exactly. Right. See, so so it's kind of a caveat to the, the right. you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, aha. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, so there's a new trailer. I, gotcha. I didn't hear about this until I opened up the show notes, so I didn't know there was one, although <laughs> I had, as I said last week, I'd already seen the the Korean version of it, which was basically a conglomerate of the two te- te- teasers and the trailer. So is this new? Oh. This is all new? No, it's not all new. It's um, It's got a significant amount of new footage but mm-hmm. it's basically the trailer that we saw what last week or two weeks ago yeah with a couple of things changed out uh there's i don't know 10 or 12 new shots uh i don't know if i'd call them scenes but definitely new shots and there's a few new audio thing a little bit new uh dialogue and they use different music uh, so it's a different experience. So if you remember last week, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember last week and I was talking about the first couple of times I watched the trailer, I was really disappointed with it because it you just didn't, didn't have, have that excitement feel right. to it. Well, this one did. <laughs> this one did. Just tweaking it a little bit and changing the music. Changed the experience. Gave it that, yeah, it just, it, it changed the entire feel gotcha. of the trailer. And it was just... It was definitely a blood pumping type of of trailer. It was it was exciting. Marjorie, you said earlier that you saw it. What did you think? It was it was a little short. I was um, expecting it to be a little bit longer. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's Star Wars, so it was pretty amazing. But I did like the um, the changes that they did make in the trailer. Yeah. Well, what were your thoughts of the the one they released Two weeks like ago. a week and a half ago? Two weeks um, ago. I've watched it about fifteen twenty times. Um, and it's, it's, there's no words. I'm so excited for it. Like, I mean, I already bought my tickets for the show. I mean, everything is on, I I don't have any way to describe it other than just being super excited. So you've already got your tickets. When, what showing are you going to watch? You're going to watch like the first night, first showing or Thursday at 10, 10, 10 PM. See, (sighs) see, I I tried to, okay. I finally found a way to get tickets early for Mm -hmm. the theater here in town. And they do have a a 10 o'clock show, both a a 2d and a 3d show. I was like, Oh shit. All right. We're going to do this. I'm about to order these tickets as well. 
What's that? It's going to be in 3D as well? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Is that not what I said? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. I, I, I hadn't uh, heard that before, so that was new to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it turns out that Friday, December 18th, is the boys' last day of school before Christmas break. Or holiday break, sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. They have finals. Or at least Lucas does. <laughs> Lucas found out for sure that he has finals on Friday. So, so if we went to the quandary. 10 o'clock showing and you're it lasts hit, for two and a half hours, you're hit with a quandary he's going to get home at like – he's going to go to bed at like 2 a.m. probably if he's lucky and get up the next day and try to do – yeah. Yeah, we're going to go so on what, Friday. So what you're saying is that you're going on Thursday and then you're taking the boys on Friday? I, <laughs> <laughs> I told Lucas that's what I was going to do. I told him I was going to – I'm going to go watch the movie Thursday night. And then pretend that I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke was like, he's like, no, 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 no. I'll be able to tell because you're going to be, instead of watching the screen at certain parts, you're going to be looking at me yep. <laughs> to yep. see my reaction. Yep. That, 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 that's, that's a genuine concern, though, because you you, by doing so, you will ruin some of the experience of him watching the show. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so I, I can't do that. This is exactly and he's in the he's in the chat. Movie Man Lucas is my son in the chat, and he says in all caps, "No way, that's not." Happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what we did when uh when uh Twilight, the last Twilight movie came out, is I bought oh. the tickets for me and my wife on Thursday night or Wednesday night for the midnight release or whatever, and then I bought uh -huh. tickets for for my wife, um, and then all the kids because we had I think I think we had all the kids for us with us on Christmas break that week. Uh, um, so I bought tickets for my wife and my mom and all the kids to go see it the next day because I would be working. I took the night off to go and watch it with her. Now the, the difference was I went, I went to watch it with her. She had forgotten most of the last, you know, how it ends. She had forgotten most of that. So when, <laughs> when, the, when the big reveal happens, I was laughing. The entire rest of the theater had suddenly forgotten what was going on. Like they either didn't read the books or had completely forgot the one key element of most of that story. And, uh, yeah, they were like, it was, it was intense. Cause I, it was like, it was like, I felt like I was in the inside crowd because I'd, I'd read the book recently, like within the last, <laughs> within the, the year prior I'd read the book. So Vampire I knew, I knew what was going on and nobody, it seemed like nobody else in the theater did cause they were all <laughs> screaming. So so th this conversation that we just had about Twilight is the most that I know about Twilight. <laughs> I've never read a book, seen the movie. Like I don't the think only... I've even seen. A, I don't think I've even seen a trailer for mm -hmm. any the of those movies. The only thing that you like, need know to know is that it. vampires don't sparkle. Right. Okay. Yeah. I've I've seen some memes on the internet that talks about sparkling vampires. That's that's like the extent of my Twilight knowledge. I know wow. nothing about it. Well, I've read all the books. I've read them all. Well, I, it took me about three attempts to read the first one because they are written aimed at 13-year-old girls. That's their target audience. Horribly written. Horribly written. And, um, yeah, I, I, I read all of them and uh, actually enjoyed them for the most part. Uh, there's there's some critiques I can make, but they're still an enjoyable story. And then I watched the yeah. movie. So I don't. when I read the books, I'd only seen the first movie. I hadn't seen any of the others. So what's better in your opinion, the books or the movies? Um, with the exception of the first movie, I thought the books were, or the, the movies were very, uh, very good representations for film of written books because mm. there's a lot of changes you have to make. And there's things that you, that you can't include. And there's, uh, you know, there's certain aspects of the story that aren't going to translate from written word to video. And I overall, I thought they did pretty good. Though the first one, they changed a couple of things because they didn't think they were going to make the whole series. And those the few things they changed, they had to recoup in later books or, what, or later movies. But other than that, uh, there's only one major issue I have with the translation from book to video, and it has to do with the uh, it has to do with the last book, which is the last two movies. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll save that conversation for anybody that wants to tweet me about it at Ethan Kane, 
and uh, we can talk about it where I'm not giving anybody spoilers or anything because this is it's one of the one of the major things I thought one of one of one of the highlights of the book, not necessarily the movie, but the highlights of the book to me. So okay, in, in fact, it's a highlight of the book only because they completely skipped that aspect of it in the movie. I mean, compl- it's not it does not exist in any way, shape, or form in the movie, but it is one of the best things about the books, bar none. So. All right, so speaking of vampires, that kind of rolls us right into talking about a horror genre, which we didn't bring Marjorie on here because we love her and miss her and love talking to her. All of those things are true, by the way. Except for Tuesday. Uh, I mean, but that's not that's not the main reason that we brought her onto the show. Um, Marjorie has some interesting hobbies. Right. Yeah, and that's that's what we brought her on to talk about. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, yeah, there we go. We we have we have a link. We have we finally have a link in the uh, the show notes. A couple of them. Yep, and uh, yeah, those those will be posted in the in the show notes for everyone's enjoyment. So, Marjorie, you you enjoy the horror genre. I do very much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell us tell us a little bit about what what you do to fulfill your enjoyment of that, and what and how you contribute to that community. Okay. Um, well, it started out just going to conventions, um, small conventions um, in northern Ohio, and um, we met up with um, some of our now friends who run a horror magazine called Horror Hound Magazine, um, and then they started putting on their conventions, and they didn't know what they were doing, um, and we had worked staff for many times with um, other small conventions ran security, um, did guest relations and things like that. Um, and so they asked Trevor to kind of step up and do those things. Now, and Trevor, so, Trevor's your husband. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, he's, yeah, he's my husband, not Philip Glass. And um, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, he, he does all the security and all the guest relations, everything involved with um, getting the hotels, getting the convention centers, making sure that the guests um, are on their flights, picking them up from the airport, um, and things like that. And then I run the staff side of it, making sure that um, the doors are covered, everyone knows um, where their security is supposed to be, um, and then also guest relations. So if a guest has a problem at a show, they come find me, complain, or send one of my staff to me to complain, and then I have to fix it. So so it's, it's very interesting. We've Oh, and it's right so in the middle of out. the basically the climax of what she was saying, she drops offline. <laughs> that, folks, is why we're still in beta. That's amazing. I wonder if that's a problem on her end. I, I guess it had to be. Yeah, I think so. All right, she's so, on a Windows machine. All right, so so uh, <laughs> she actually she made me promise that that her appearance would not be an Apple commercial. So while she's not here, I'm gonna go ahead and bag on Windows. <laughs> She's on a Windows PC. <laughs> uh, oh shit! That's okay. Awesome. All right. So, can what can what convention experience do you have? I mean, we're we're talking about her and her conventions. Uh, yeah. What, um, what conventions have you been to? Nothing big, really. Um, the, the the probably the biggest convention that I've been to, honestly, is when I was stationed at Spangdalem Air Base in Germany they had a star Wars convention and they put it on every year for, well, I think when I left, they were on like their fourth year, third or fourth year. Mm -hmm. And it started out like really, really small. I mean, like we're talking like 20 people showed up and it was just like some games and they were showing the movies and stuff like that. By the time I left, they had changed it from a star Wars convention to a sci-fi convention because it had grown so much the main focus was still on star Wars, but it was like, I'd say 50% star Wars and 50% everything else. They got so big that they had the, uh, what do they call it? The 501st, 501st Legion, I think, whatever the, the, the guys that dress up as stormtroopers mm. and go to different conventions and different parades and all that sort of stuff. They actually came to Germany and, uh, they were there putting on a, a, a thing, yeah, five of first, and they just had there was there were celebrity guests and it was really cool. 
and Marjorie is back, so I can stop rambling about a convention that I went to one time. So. <laughs> Sorry, Firefox. <laughs> oh, it was Firefox. Into. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I don't know where you guys left off or what where I left off. Um, you were just talking about doing um, so or guest relations, and yeah. if they have problems, they come find you. Yes. So, like, if um, their money's off or if there's um, a condor who is bothering them, um, then I come out and handle that situation, or I find Trevor or um, one of our other security guys to, to come and take care of the situation, depending on what it may be. Um, so mm. I, I run security for um, the cast of The Walking Dead. Um, little um, Chandler Riggs is one of mine that I have to walk around the convention um, to make sure that he gets there safely. So And also Norman Reedus. That lovely man. Um, so I get to take care of him sometimes too. So it it is very interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would imagine that there's a lot of women out there that are very very jealous of uh, you being you being in that position. Yes, um, I I've been in numerous confrontations with a lot of the Norman Rita fans. Um, I won't say what we call them on there. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, um, nothing good, I'm sure. <laughs> no, um, and I've I've had people get get into my face and um, try and tell me, you know, you need to let me through. And I mean, I'm six foot three. Come on, guys, you're four foot whatever. Don't come up to me. I'm gonna take you down. Um, but I had to go through all that training and make sure that we knew how to properly touch people. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so this, this, this would that. be this would be a good time to mention that uh, both Marjorie and and Trevor are um, l- l- taller people. Yes, we I are. Mean, I'm I'm six foot two. They are statured. Yeah, <laughs> they are yeah. both statured. Yeah, I, I, I'm six foot two, yes. and I'm I I've been looking up at Marjorie since uh, I don't know, like senior year when she was a yeah. freshman. So um, <laughs> right, they're 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 not they're not uh, they're not small people you, not you, me. No. yeah yeah you're not you're not you're not putting these people in your pocket there i think the last time i was taller than marjorie i was like a freshman 14 and she was 12 <laughs> or something like that yeah. or, or 11 you are way more than two years older than me way more <laughs> way more <laughs> way, way more oh like three yeah three Sorry. three years three that's Ooh. a big deal oh. <laughs> but no um so these like uh, when we had uh, John Bernthal, um, and he plays Shane in The Walking Dead, and then Norman Reedus, of course, he's Daryl. Um, and these women were just all trying to get into where they were at all times. Um, and they had to put myself um, and a few of my friends who are all statuesque um, in line to make sure that they couldn't get to them or take pictures or anything like that of those people um, because we, they get paid for those pictures. And so I was knocking cell phones out of people's hands, didn't care if they fell and broke, because that's just what you do. So <laughs> you hit oh. the phone, you don't hit the hand. As long <laughs> as we do that, there's no losses. <laughs> oh, damn. So, hey, did, did you ever meet, um, what, what's her name, Gwendolyn Christie? She plays Brienne on Game of Thrones, oh. and she's also going to be in the new Star Wars movie. No, um, I've not met anybody from Game of Thrones, sadly. Ah, okay. I, I'd be, I was just wondering I'd be because she's a she's a very tall. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd, uh, I'd be interested in, in Gwendolyn Christie and and Marjorie Collins standing next to each other in a picture with, in a pose. That's like that. yeah, that's what I was that's what I was fishing for. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor's met the guy who plays Hod- Hodor. Yeah. Oh that, yeah. Chris. That guy shadows Trevor. Yeah. He yeah he's he's a big dude. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's yeah. one of the reasons oh, wow. we need to make it to Nurtacular next year, dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, he comes well, to the Dragon Talk too. There's not going to be a Nertacular next year. Well, in, in 16, the 10-year anniversary one. The, oh, the, oh. Well, I don't know. We'll see. There, that, there, that event is kind of in flux. So we'll see what happens with that. I guess I need to Just catch up with my podcast. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that. It's, we have almost a year to plan that one out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, You'll meet everybody about. you want to meet at Dragon Con. <laughs> so, so who are who are some of the other cool people that you've met? Uh, we got to have a convention for Jamie Lee Curtis, um, and of course, everybody knows her herself. 
Yes. Um, and <laughs> she's fabulous. Love her. She is one of the funniest people we've ever had at a show. Um, but we, in order to get her, we had to do um, a special convention just for her. Um, and all proceeds went to the L.A. County Children's Hospital. And we raised, like, over $100,000 that weekend for them. Okay, oh, wow. Well, see, if you're, yeah. if you're, at least and if you're going to be she, a big head, have it go to a good cause. Yes. Uh, and she was, and she was so cool about it because I mean everybody came. We had people from um, Japan and Russia and people flying to Indiana to meet her. Um, so hmm. it was very, it was, it was very diverse. But we only sold a certain amount of tickets. I think it was like 2,500 tickets that we sold, and they sold out like instant. Um, and then she, she was, she was cracking jokes about Activia and all kinds of funny stuff. Um, but she was a workhorse. She worked from like eight o'clock in the morning till everything was done at midnight, and then did it again. Um, oh, wow. She, she yeah. was fabulous. But um, and then she did all the photo ops with everybody, and um, she didn't have a lot of rules. A lot of celebrities have rules of you can't photograph me from this angle. You need mm. to be this certain height. This lighting can't be there, and they're very picky. But she was like, I don't care. Everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> no, so it was. No, no, how, was how many? Of, how many of those celebrities actually know that the that that shit's in their writer. You know what I mean? Um, say that again. How many of those celebrities know that, that all that shit is in their writer? Or is that just like uh, the publicist like puts all that down because that's what they that's think? That's their or, agent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's definitely their agent. <laughs> they're like I'm sure there's some, going, I'm sure there's some divas years. out there that, yeah. that have their demands, but I, I, I do imagine that the agents have a lot more of that. Yeah, than the, the actual there story. are many divas that we have to deal with. Um, can, can you imagine Lady most... Gaga's writer? <laughs> like, Fuck. it's it's like you can't take a picture of me unless like you're wearing a meat hat with uh, condom strips to your nipples <laughs> and a big purple flag hanging out your butt. You know what I mean? Like those are the only people that are allowed to fil- photograph me today. You know? Um, if we could get <laughs> right. if if we could get the cast of AHS, that would be so freaking awesome because then we could get Gaga. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's very crazy. Um, we, we've we been a lot of places and got to see so so many things. Some things I kind of want to forget, but um, a lot of them <laughs> have been pretty cool. <laughs> but um, The Walking Dead, we've met everybody from the Lost Boys except for Kiefer Sutherland, sadly. Um, so those guys are awesome. We um, The guy who wrote, and I can't think of his name right now, but the guy who wrote Cry, Cry Little Sister came to the show and performed um, in Indianapolis with our convention. Oh, and right so on. All, all of the, the cast was singing with him, and it was um, we had, when both the Corys were, were around, um, so it was pretty cool. Nice. That That's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. So the this is Horror Hound. Horror mm-hmm. Hound Weekend, right? Yes, is Horror Hound Weekend. Yes. And where does, it, where does it take place? Um, in September, it's in Indianapolis, and then in um, March, it's in Cincinnati. Okay, so it's a it's a biannual yes. convention. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Nice. I thought it was a, a once a year thing. Okay, that's that's really cool. And when we so, have special events, we can we like Jamie. We had her in November um, because she was a special event. Nice. That that yeah, that's really awesome. If people want to find out about Horror Hound Weekend, where should they go? Um, horrorhoundweekend.com, um, oh, or you can easy. also, or you can also find us on Facebook <laughs> at um, Horrorhound on Facebook. And then, if you want to volunteer, which please, we need lots of volunteers, is Horrorhound Weekend on Facebook um, slash volunteers. So very easy. That's awesome. So, all right. So, let's say I want to volunteer. What am I going to get to do? Can I be like the the uh, you know the the guy that's rubbing Jamie Lee Curtis's shoulders, or <laughs> no. like what what are we what are we talking about? Does Robert well, England have a fluffer? That's what we want to know. <laughs> he does not have a fluffer. And, and, and who gets to there be... are many women who want to be his fluffer, but <laughs> oh, oh man, that's he's awesome. freaking hilarious too, though. He's a lot of fun. Um, but uh, what you'd get to do as a volunteer, um, we need people for security to check doors, making sure that people come in with their passes. Um, we have a lot of people who try and sneak into the show to meet guests. Um, and that's just not cool. Um, security walking the celebrity to and from photo ops or to their um, panels or back to the hotel room or to the cars even. Um, drivers um, driving the celebrity to and from the airport and other things. 
um, and or just being at the celebrity's desk. Some celebrities require that they have a staff member with them at all times to take money, to count numbers, to do all those things. Wow. So very cool. So so if you volunteer, there's a there's a really really high chance that you're going to get to talk to some celebrities and interact with them. Uh, it's a, a definite chance. Yes. That's that's really cool. So yeah, if you're going to be in the Cincinnati area in March, you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely hit this out if you if you want to be involved in something really cool, something really geeky. If you like horror, if you just want to rub shoulders with some celebrities, check it out. That sounds really um, and fun. And come come March, you don't have to just like horror. There's other things that are going to be there. So. Right on, right on. <laughs> you can't just say we there's going to be things. other things there and not tell us what other things are going to yeah. be there. Like, <laughs> well, if you go to the website, you'll see that we have some ah! new people from the X Files. The website cast. Ooh, ah. The X Files. The yeah. X Files is one of those kind of crossover things that kind of deals with sci-fi, maybe a little bit of horror. So yeah, that's 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 really cool. So uh, do, yeah. do you get a lot of things that that are kind of a crossover appeal? Yeah. Uh, um, some we, sci-fi, we have, some some fantasy maybe. We've even had um Jay and Silent Bob on our show. <laughs> awesome. So completely random, but it's awesome because Jay Muse is hilarious. Um, <laughs> so plus he's got so, a yeah, big dick. Him. What was that, Amos? Plus, he's got a big dick. <laughs> I heard that he that. did actually. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, Have you that, seen that was. Zach a, and Mary? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's where. Yeah, that's uh, where ac- was. According <laughs> according to Kevin Smith, the whole precipice of creating the whole premise of creating Zach and Mary make a porno is because Jason kept telling him, "When do I get to show my dick in a movie?" <laughs> like that was it. That was the whole thing. Like Kevin Smith was like, "Fine, I'll fucking write a movie where you get to show your dick." <laughs> and and that movie was Zach and Mary. Like that sounds like something Jay would say. <laughs> oh Jesus! It's yeah. Badass. When do I get to show yeah, my that dick? That guy's something else. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> he's uh, a lot of fun to have the conventions. He there's never a dull moment when he's around. I bet. I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, does he have like a crew member to walk around carrying his dick? No, 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 he doesn't. No, that, no, no. I would volunteer if that were a thing. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Did so he much... actually show his dick in the movie? Yes. I yes. don't remember. Yeah, at the yeah. very end when he walks from one room to another when uh, when, when Mary's in the, the bathroom. Huh, and okay, because I remember... In, you need to the watch the movie too, a little bit the... more, dude. Like, that's that's one of the movies you should be well-schooled on. That's like... That's yeah. Fucking, that's a fucking hilarious movie. I watched movie. the movie once, like, right when it... No, I didn't watch it in theaters, but right when it came out on video, I, I watched it. Oh, but, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, it, you, it's you, been a while. Now, now you got to watch it, except this time you're going to be meat-gazing. You're going to be watching the show <laughs> just waiting for the dick to pop up. You know what I mean? Like, that's – it's kind of sad, but, so, I mean, I still I understand, I guess. You know, it's, <laughs> now I mean, now I'm some sort of cock-hound. Okay. <laughs> cock-hound. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the only star of cock-hound. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Or whorehound, like certain people are, are yeah. talking about it in the chat. Yeah. Horror. Horrorhound. Horror. Yeah. Ho- Horrorhound's in Vegas that. every year, isn't it? So it's it, whores or not whores. Or yeah. No, no, wait. Horror. Or, horror. Or, okay. <laughs> wow. All right, you, so you horror. Kept, you horror just kept hound. digging that one, dude. You just kept digging and kept digging and it didn't. But the thing is, is it's so true because we have this discussion a lot. So what does your husband do? He works for Whorehound Weekend. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Whorehound. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah. imagine. He, he, he's, he's a bouncer at Whorehound. I want to be a bouncer at Whorehound. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> candy to the stage, candy. Yeah. Candy to the main stage. Yeah. Grinder. Oh, man. No, so uh, no. yeah. as, as Warren starts playing <laughs> in the background. Um yeah, that, that, uh, that'd be a great trick to play in Trevor is every time he walks into a room, just play Warrant. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? She's my cherry pie. What? Oh, oh, God. oh shit. Oh, oh man. geez. Play bad 80s music. So, all right, so speaking of conventions, there's a convention going on right now. A really big one. No, where? BlizzCon. What? BlizzCon. What is that? Blizzard Entertainment. What the fuck? Everybody knows about Blizzard. Come who, on, who, I've never who heard of it. Who, who ever created a a, a a convention named after themselves? Uh, well, 
Very um, successful companies do that. Warhound? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So BlizzCon, BlizzCon's going, right, going on right now. Um, every fucking celebrity that has anything to do with Blizzard is currently in, was it San Diego? Um, some, it's, it's in California. It's somewhere yeah. out there. Be, somewhere between, yeah. between the mix, somewhere between Tijuana and West Hollywood. All right. Somewhere in the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. <laughs> um, oh man. Yeah. That's, that's one of those conventions that I always wanted to go to. Uh, even I, I'm not a big gamer. Like I don't have time to sit there and just play games. If I could, that'd be my only thing that I would accomplish. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I got to tell you, man, between the, uh, the the trailer that came out for um, for the Warcraft movie, that looks fucking amazing. And I think yeah. it's going to be the the it, it, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting into the lore and how. Uh, yeah, it's just it's going to be amazing. And then. Well, it's ba- did you. OK, I know you you've played World of Warcraft, but mm-hmm. did you ever play any of the Warcraft games, the, the RTS games? Uh, World Warcraft two and Warcraft three. I never played. The OK, original. yeah. I never played the first one, which I my understanding is that this movie is. Pre- centered around the the first story it's yeah so it's, like warcraft it's, one or it's what leads a, into, a roundabout yeah uh warcraft three is where i jumped in uh, to the lore and so, so yeah i mean yeah. maybe maybe there's some some character because i'm not real familiar with the overall the overarching lore I, i'm very kind of narrow with that so i'm, I'm wondering if i'm going to recognize some of the some of the characters or situations or whatnot but one thing that i do know is that the the backgrounds or the the setting looks very much like the video game. It's like right out of the video game. Yep. And one thing that I think is really cool is the way that they render a lot of the CG. It's not made to to look photorealistic. It looks like the cinematics in a video game. Right. And I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. But if you, if like you're, as a reminder if you're a that of, hey, this is a video game movie. If you're a fan of Blizzard, then you've noticed that their cinematics are amazing, though. Like, oh, absolutely! Like they they absolutely. have some of the best cinematics in in the fucking industry. And yeah. if you're gonna make, and this is one of the things that, that I think Scott Johnson said on the instance uh, about a year ago, probably right around last BlizzCon, actually. Um, if <laughs> If the movie is just a hour and a half or two hour version of a cinematic, if that's all it is, take my money. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. it's still gonna be good. So, um, they've got the best voice actors in the game. They've got uh, some of the best video renderers in the game. Uh, and by the game, I don't mean video games. I mean in the movie industry. Right. Um, it's just it's going to be awesome and looking into the story and how things are played out and everything else it it's it looks like it's going to be fucking phenomenal so mm-hmm. and uh there's yeah, some, it's, there's there's a little bit more news coming out of BlizzCon as well oh yeah there's quite a bit man they they've got they they had major announcements for Heroes of the Storm uh there's a new adventure coming out for Hearthstone uh that adds i think it's 45 new cards and uh, it's it looks pretty badass. Yeah. Um, there's uh, they, they've been talking about some some championships for for some esports versions of of Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone and a bunch of stuff. Um, start there was some StarCraft two announcements that I didn't get a chance to read about, so uh, I'm not real sure what's going on there. But this is you know all of this stuff. You know, and, and they talked about Overwatch, their new game that's coming out next year. Mm-hmm. There's so much stuff that they've talked about and this is only day one there's two more full days yep of major announcements and i'm sure they're not gonna give away all of their their big big stuff on day one and you, they've you, had you know some the, uh, pretty amazing shit that they've come out with they traditionally already. have a band close out blizzcon and uh last year it was metallica this year i think it's lincoln park is it yeah yeah that that might be yeah that sounds right but yeah, that's sick. Metallica, yep. closing out a a nerd dork geek con. Right, you, you know that. What you, the fuck is this? What is this? Twenty fifteen. Yeah, like, yeah. Holy you, shit. You, you know Kirk Hammett had a part in that because he's the biggest. Geek yeah. In that oh. Group. <laughs> oh. Spe- yeah. Kirk Hammett is a huge horror geek. Mm-hmm. 
he is all about that shit. The the lead guitarist for Metallica. Yeah. He's a huge so, nerd. So Marjorie, what uh what affiliation with Blizzard do you have? Like are you have have you have you never played any Blizzard games? Uh never a Diablo game or StarCraft, Warcraft? Anything no, like that? I have a I am not a gamer, unfortunately. Um Kent convinced me to download Hearthstone earlier, so I did that on my phone. <laughs> I'll check that out and tell you guys later how I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in the pre-show when I mentioned Blizzard, she's like, what? What are you talking about? The pre-show, which lasted for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, waiting on waiting on Amos's horrible, horrible day. Horrible day. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, we, uh, uh, Movie Man Lucas says that uh, BlizzCon is in Anaheim. Which, yes, which yes. again, which is, is in California, which so is we in were fact accurate. in between Tijuana and West LA. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a little closer to West LA than it is to Tijuana, but uh, it's still there. It's yeah. <laughs> West well, Hollywood the Hill, only thing I, I said LA. definitively was it's in California, so yeah. um, I win. So, uh, so they also announced a an expansion <laughs> to World of Warcraft. Oh yes, yes. Which I heard um, that I didn't watch it, but I heard that that trailer was even more impressive than the Warcraft movie trailer. I I haven't had a chance to watch it because it wouldn't load it at work. Mm. Um, but uh, looking at the premise of it, it looks pretty freaking amazing. If you're a World of Warcraft fan, if you just are a fan of Warcraft lore in general, it looks pretty awesome. So looking. So are good. you an Alliance guy or uh, Horde side? <laughs> Yeah, I knew the answer to that. I just wanted to see how you reacted to it. You wanted to hear me say Horde side again, huh? <laughs> Actually, I was hoping that you'd say for the Horde. Oh. But... Loctar with Gar. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, yeah I'm, to I'm totally Horde side. And I think the movie is going to shed some light on that relationship, actually, Lions and, and Horde. But, yes, yes, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's going to be pretty fucking exciting. I like it. All yeah. right. Uh, what else we got on the old uh, show notes since I turned them off already? Because I'm a dipshit and I I like doing things on the fly. Yeah, um, Marjorie, tell us a little bit about fostering. Oh um, shit! Yeah, that's a good one. I forgot all about that. Well, um, <laughs> um, I've been I've all you guys and I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, that's been my whole life goal, and unfortunately for me, that wasn't going to happen. No, um, no, you, so, you, and, you and Trevor have the uh, the friends thing going on, right? The what? Friends, you know, where uh, where Chandler had uh, like he 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 was it he he had he had a jacked up sperm factory and and uh, <laughs> she had an inhospitable environment or something like that. Like there's there's a reason for both of you not to have children and you're together. Well, so you said me. screw it, we're it's, just gonna. It's, 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 it's unfortunately just me. Okay, so you um, just you just have the inhospitable environment. Got it. Right. right. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> never really put it that way, but hey, but that, yeah, that, so. that's, that's, to that, put it nicely. That, that's the quote from the show. I'm not like you know overreaching here. I'm quoting fucking friends. So to, like, if so you can't quote nicely, friends, you're not friends. You, I'm just saying. Your body is a hellscape. Is what he's <laughs> saying. Thanks, <laughs> famous. Love you too. <laughs> Notice, note that I was the one that said those words, but put them look, in look, look. If you if you're not gonna win, <laughs> lose with power. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Oh, so anyway. <laughs> um, all right. So, so all that you know, ten years of testing and hell and all that shit, um, and finally. And lots decided... of sex, by the way. What? And lots of sex, by the way. I mean, there there's a plus side to trying to have children. There's always a plus side. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that all came to be where I, I can't. And so um, we got involved with DCS, um, the Department of Child Services. Um, we had some friends who worked in the department, and they're like, well, why don't you work with us and get foster? And they're like, uh, I don't know if I want to foster because, I've always wanted kids, and I didn't know if I could handle them coming and then leaving. Hmm. So um, they said, well, we have a foster to adopt program, and I didn't know anything about it. Two years of classes, um, and these classes are sometimes four to eight hours long, um, sitting there listening to somebody yammer on about how to raise children, what to do in this situation, and whatnot. Um, because apparently there is a manual. 
but you just have to go through the state. Um, <laughs> so, so we, we um, went after from the all ritual the misery pro- done, the ritual misery podcast to what's wrong with America. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so after all the classes were done, we got our license, um, and then um, we got we had no calls. We got our license in May of 2013. We had no phone calls. I was sitting at work um, on August 22nd of 2013, and my DCS co-worker or, um, worker called me and said, "Hey, I have this baby, and you have 10 minutes to decide." Um, she's a legal risk, meaning that um, she could potentially go back to her family. Um, so we thought about it for like five seconds and said, yes, we definitely want her. Um, and then 15 minutes later, I had a baby in my arm. Hmm. So it was very fast. I had zero preparation. Um, I made a call to my friends and I was like, um, guys, I have a baby. And within an hour, I had everything I was going to need for that child. Um, after that, and then 18 months later, we adopted Lily as our daughter, um, and then um, her biological mother got pregnant within two months of giving birth to her. So then, when once we found out that um, she was pregnant, it was you have t- you have nine months to prepare because you are going to be getting this child, regardless of the situation. You're going to get this child. Um, because unfortunately the mother just isn't able. Mm. And so nine months later, we get her brother, so half brother, um, and his name is now Weston, and he's our adopted son back from May. But throw a little bit of wrench in our life, or a very large wrench in our life. In um, March of 2014, we met a 13-year-old little girl and fell in love with her and um, brought her in to stay, visit, and everything. Found out she was a perfect match for us. And in September of last year, we adopted her as well. And she's now 14 going on 30. And um, I have a, a invested in hair dye companies. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so a couple of years ago, you were wishing and hoping to be a parent and not – Thinking that you know, th- probably thinking that oh, it's just a dream. It's not going to happen. Right. But now you have a very, very full household, yeah. children, <laughs> to include a a teenager, and so yeah, is it baby. is it is it everything you were hoping it would be? Is it is it all the it's, horrors that everyone warned you about? Where is somewhere in between? What, what during the foster to adopt part of it, it was all the horrors that you've ever heard. Um, oh, the yeah. fear of losing them. Um, with with Callie, my oldest, um, we didn't we didn't have those fears because she was already legally free to be adopted. We were just waiting on paperwork to go through to get the adoption finalized. Um, but with the babies, there was court dates after court dates after doctor's appointments after um, the state coming in and checking our house and making sure that everything was perfect. Um, you know, we're nerds, so we collect a lot of horror stuff. Um, and so we have an entire room that we had to basically lock off um, when they came. Because, you know, we have a full-scale uh, legend um, <laughs> in our office, and he's like six foot tall, and that would scare people. Just oh my god! Legend standing there. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Um, and we have full-scale terror dogs um, in in that office too, and so they were afraid that. Uh, the kids would be scared. Now, hell, they, they play with them. So, yeah, yeah. so they're totally fine with it. Um, but we also have uh, like swords and things like that on the walls that we had to take down during our mm. home inspections. And those are just mm. pure hell because it's four hours of a home inspection where they literally <sighs> go through your drawers. Um, oh, it's, my God. It's everything. They check everything. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's been a whirlwind, but it's the best thing I've ever done. That's awesome. Wow. Truly. I, yeah. I I don't know I don't well uh, we've already talked before Kent but uh, I was a dad for almost a decade before I was really ready to become a father and uh, mm. I don't know how you go from I, I guess maybe just because you were ready I, I don't know but going from uh, from not being a mother to being a mother of three just a couple of years and the <laughs> age range that you have it's it's pretty remarkable and uh, yeah. 
Who's... Well, you know, through through the whole process, I mean, I there was limited information that you could give the yeah. public about the process. Yep. And from what little I knew about what you were going through, I was I was cheering for you in the background because I knew how much you wanted to be a mother and I've always thought of you as as someone that would be a good mom. Well, so I was I was definitely in the background like yes go go. So yeah. so I was I, really I have, really happy to. to I see have this a question for you. I'm different wish. Sure. Pe people that meet you now, you don't introduce your children as oh these are my adopted kids. It's just these are my kids. These so my kids. in 15 years, when you and Trevor are walking along with you know at probably two of the kids because the oldest one would have probably well hopefully have be, you know blossomed <laughs> and, and done whatever. Um, by then you'll be going to be walking like through the mall at Christmas time with the kids or whatever. And you and Trevor are like, you know, nine feet tall and everybody's going to be looking at these kids. Like, are, are those like giant midgets? Is... No. Is... Um, Lily is actually, Lily's going to be our little petite thing. Um, her biological father is four foot 11. Mm. So, so, so yes, that. they're going to be the giant midgets. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then Weston's biological dad is um, six foot tall, so he'll be he'll he'll be the tall one. Um, but yeah, no, but Lily's going to be uber tiny. Wow. <laughs> so we're trying to figure that out. I mean, and also um, Callie's mulatto too. So um, we've talked about numerous ways of how to explain to Lily and Weston why she looks different. Um, we've come up with great, great scenarios of that. Um, like if Lily goes, you know, like Kelly, what, why is your skin darker? And she's going to like, mom, oh my God, what's wrong with my skin? You know, <laughs> yeah. kind of light of it um, yep. because she's, she is pretty dark, but, uh, but yeah, just to, to make light of it, but we're not going to yeah. hold back. We're just going to let them know that this is the situation, um, yep. it was, it was a closed adoption. So we know who the parents are, but we can't divulge that information. I um, mean, Callie, of course, knows her biologicals because she lived with them, but the babies mm -hmm. don't. Right. So. Right. Right. Well, it's pretty awesome either way, though. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yep. definitely fun. <laughs> Having two toddlers is not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> My house is never clean. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no! I'm I, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a a, a a a toddler, a dog, a son, and two daughters living with me, and uh, yeah. <laughs> There's never a moment where I don't have hair somewhere on my body or in my mouth. Like it, it just it it happens. It's like oh, I and got dog always, hair all over my freshly washed hands, and then you go to take a drink of water, like. Yep. <laughs> Right, oh my who, god! Who I've got I've got there? two dogs, two cats, and a girlfriend, and all of them shed. Yes, like, like <laughs> stop, just stop brushing your hair in in the kitchen. And she's like, I was, brushing, <laughs> yeah, she's like, right? I was brushing it outside <laughs> while like, oh, you're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. It's, it's the best lighting, okay, guys? It's the yeah. best lighting. Uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> all right, man. So what, what oh else? God. What else we got today, Kent? Oh man, that's that's really about it. I I think we've had a pretty full show. I've you know, I've I've really 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 enjoyed having Marjorie on. I know she was a little bit nervous about coming on the show, but I told her probably about a week ago that she's going to have so much fun on the show that she's going to be immediately afterwards saying, "When can I come back?" And is that the case? Is that the case? Maybe a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you did, but you did have fun, right? She, I did, I did she, have fun. She, it wasn't as bad said, as I thought it was going to be. She, she said exactly. maybe a little, like uh, like high school girls do about sex. Like, yeah, I might like it. Like she, uh, she doesn't want to become a become a, a podcast damn. whore, but she's like, yeah, I'm I'm doing this again. So, it's horror, horror, horror. Uh, what, what, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Look, it's it's you know, it, it, it is what it is. No, but that's awesome. Saying. Thank you so much, Marjorie, for coming on the show. I knew you were gonna have a good time. I'm glad you agreed to actually come on. Uh, I had a blast. It only, it only took how long? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're you're a busy bomb, and you got a bunch of stuff going on. It's really hard to 
to, to get this scheduled. And, in fact, if Amos wasn't going to be on the show, we were going to go ahead and do the show, just the two of us, and we were going to have to go to the old school pre-Diamond Club yeah. TV way, and that was... Which we kind of did anyway. Um, we're just... It's, it's, well, it's kind old of, school we're plus still Diamond TV. The, DC TV. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was trying to rack my brain trying to remember how to get all that shit rolling and then you're like, hey, I'm on my way home. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so. Sigh of relief. All right. So yeah. did, did we ever figure out Marjorie's uh, uh, Twitter handle? Yes. yes. It's at Mrs. Marjorie. At, at Mrs. M R S M A R J O R I E. All right. So at, at Mrs. Mrs. Marjorie. Marjorie on Twitter. She's Mama Collins in the in the chat room. Um, yep. And Kent, where uh, where can people find more about you, man? Besides rate beer and Twitter. Right. Yeah. And Facebook. Oh, besides and, and, and besides knocking, those. And, and, um, and knocking on your. Well, door. you can you can come to New Mexico. My address is. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait 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 yeah. wait wait wait. You, 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 no no no. <laughs> screw that. Just look me up on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. Or if you're a beer guy, go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche and you can see what I've been up to, which has not yeah. been a lot in the last couple of weeks. But. <laughs> um, I'm Ethan. But Twitter King. is the best place to find me. I'm Ethan Queen. Ethan. Uh, <laughs> Blah, blah, I'm blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, you, oh, you, oh, it, it, I'm it. tired and can't speak. Blah, uh, blah, blah. Yeah, that's their um, hashtag oh, beta. Oh, what? what? Um, <laughs> hashtag still in beta. Yeah, still in beta. There we go. That's going to be our official thing. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can go to ritualmisery.com slash support to continue sh good shows like this going on. Uh, going forward, and to find out more information about us, ritualmisery.com. Um, oh, shit. I, see, I'm trying to remember all this just off the top of my head. Uh, you got uh, you, you can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. Uh, it's 567-698-7672. Um, yep. uh, thank you to... Uh, 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 Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod in contact.com <laughs> for making our... <laughs> Our, our theme music. Why the hell did you close out the show notes? Because I was, I, I'm having audio problems again. I was trying to cut down on, on my computer's uh, processing shit. I, I didn't have that. time to reboot it for the show. All right, <laughs> and uh, so you can catch up all on all of that at incomptech.com. You can catch up on our show, richmisery.com. That's our show. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Look, Hashtag man, was, still in beta. I was, I was doing <laughs> the best I fucking could, all right? Oh. <laughs> like, like, oh my god. I remember the damn phone number. You gotta give me a break on Kevin McLeod, all right? <laughs> like, do you know the phone number? No, you don't know the phone number. And I just said it. You're like, uh, let me let me look it up real quick so we can pretend like I remember. Right. <laughs> so, no, he just, he just tapped over to the show notes. Uh, yeah, see? <laughs> that I still have open. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, excuse me for not having the fancy dancing computer you've got. Oh. <laughs> Damn. That's right. Your shit reboots automatically. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, that's amazing. What a that's good show. Crazy. What a good show. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah, that was a pretty fun show. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Hopefully, that'll that'll fix my audio problem, and uh, we can chat a little bit more. Uh, thank you to the chat room. Man, so awesome to have a chat room and have people in it and be able to throw mm -hmm. random shit in there. Um, so very cool. All right. Yep, yep. Thank you, chat room. Bye. All right. See ya.